Ali Hornig will start it off with the serve for the Boilers. And come in having won four of their last five matches. Quickly set up for Trammell. And Hannah picking up where she left off. The kill for Cameron Hannah. Ended up finishing out the last two sets the other night in a dominant win over Iowa. Skimmerhorn with the setup, rolled over by Shacoin. And Merzik, a little bit of a heavy ball there. And over to the Boilers, and Shacoin. Youth versus experience, what we're dealing with this afternoon, Anna Conley. It is, but this one serving right here, Chloe Shacoin, watching her, especially with the serve, you wouldn't tell, or you couldn't be able to tell that she is a freshman. And Merzik, again, a little bit long. Look at the starting lineup for the Boilers. Talked a lot about Shacoin and Eva Hudson. Raven Colvin, though, the voice that everybody seems to listen to. Well, she really isn't taking control up at that net for blocking. Pay attention to seven in black. Not in right now on the court, but her eyes. Those eyes blocking allows it, and especially in a play like we just saw. Sometimes in volleyball, blocks aren't necessarily there to get blocks, okay? So it's so your defense can set up. And again, a closed block will force the other team to have unforced errors. And so far, some big swings early on for the Nits. And there's Myers. Back at Rec Hall, where Purdue's come out strong, which has been a theme for Dave Shandell's Boilers as of late. But the Nits with an answer. That's Cameron exactly, Hannah. that's exactly what Katie wanted to do. Break that serve, first ball side out. And again, create that unforced error. Chloe Shikoyne had to kind of wait for us to get back from commercial and the timeout to wrap up. And so it creates kind of this little bit of a nervous, right? She's a freshman, she doesn't play like it. But again, we're all human. It's tough to be sitting back there bouncing a ball and waiting for the one thing that you absolutely are alone to do in this game. Big swing there and a kill for Eva Hudson. Coming out strong, first set. It's been a theme though, and as of late, 19 kills on Wednesday. Extra time to prepare for this after avenging a loss to Indiana. And Merzik takes care of that one. You're gonna see this a lot from nine in pink. Jess Merzik, we talked about her at the top of the show. Quick tempo and she's so dynamic. She's able to just get paint the tiniest hands or paint the line. There was one play, I was watching the Nebraska game last week and even though Penn State got swept, there was one play that she, it was the most unbelievable hit. Expect to see a lot of that today. Hudson really challenging Merzik there. Went over to the Boilers. As much as uh, Chloe Shukoin gets all the love, Eva Hudson cannot be forgotten about. Again, a sophomore and doesn't really play like an underclassman. She's got a big, heavy arm, but nonetheless, she's super smart offensively. Taylor Anderson with the serve. Tapped over by Merzik. Sent back again, Hudson. And there's Pedraza. One point over to Purdue. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. From a number one versus number two, and that's a number one, number two that's definitely going to change next week. They've been just trading off this year, but a five-set thriller. I'll be honest, I haven't watched the game yet because I was covering another game last night, but I am about to settle down on my popcorn on my flight with my popcorn on my flight home and rewatch it. Remember at one point, as Merza gets this blocked at the point over to the Boilers, where people considered Nebraska a football school. <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not anymore. After 92,000 people piling in for a volleyball game, heck no, man. Pedraza sets this up. Holland 
He was one of the few players last Saturday that was actually effective against the Huskers. And who sneaks this over? Again, so we started out this match with Purdue getting on a service run, and now Penn State has fought their way back with purposeful serving, but likewise, great serve receive. Skimmer Horn the serve, Pedraza the set up, tapped over, Merzik, here's Hudson. A point to the Boilers. Great. Great dig for Allie Horn Hornung. And then, of course, Eva Hudson just paints that one. That's a tough ball to defend. Even for Penn State's Lavero, Jillian Grimes was fantastic. Skipper Horn with the service error. Now Berzik over to serve. Dave Shondell told us different player, Jess Merzik this year. Which is hard to believe that she's even better than she was a year ago at Michigan. She's fantastic. She's developed just so much. Even in, even in here at Penn State. Hudson able to hammer that in between. In between the tandem of Pedraza and Holland. trying to claw their way back from what was seven down. Second serve for the grad student, Lauren Poulter. Now Anderson on, on the substitution. Bursic. Big swing again. Seventh kill of the match. Well, we say she's, Coach Katie Schumacher Crawley said, she is super impressive, but it's really that back row attack. Look at her hands for follow through, the little flick of the wrist. She's able to hit the corners. Anytime you're coming out of the back row, the goal, the aim is to hit those corners so you avoid the block. Corners are difficult to defend, dare I say, undefendable. There's that Pet State block again. And this is where experience really comes into play. Matt Pedraza and of course Taylor Trammell going up on that block. Experience, experience, experience. The more games you get, the more touches you get, the more volleyball you play, the easier and the slower the game is. Hudson swings a point home for Purdue. Fifth kill of this first set. Dug up by Grimes. Hammered by Trammell, she'll get it again. Sends it over the top. Colvin with the punch. Long and Nitz are two points away. There you go, you enter into row one with your setter, your most experienced kind of team leader. Serving, this is exactly where you want to be if you're Penn State. Dug out by Shakoin. Guess who, Hannah. Big weekend for her. That's what you do. Mac Pedraza is going to target the freshman who's playing all the way around. It's no knock on Chloe Chicoin. It's a hard serve. He's going straight at you with the float from a senior. And Heaney, but long and wide.
Time constraints. We now move ahead in the action. Top two programs in the country reside here at B1G. I, mean, I, I got to be honest, I, I think I tweeted about it. I was expecting Wisconsin to come out and win just because of their experience and the depth. They're in a 6-2. Dave Shondell talked about both Wisconsin and Nebraska. You're looking up at the, the top of the mountain. Urzik with the dig. And Markley got it blocked back. There's Colvin. Heaney also there. Great way to set that block from the first. Grace Heaney. And watch her eyes. Look at their eyes. The timing. That's Grace Heaney leading that. I know Raven Colvin probably gets the credit for that, but those pin hitters, pin hitters are setting the block for the middle to come over and meet them. Barkley, and there's Colvin again. Swinging arm, that right shoulder, Raven Colvin closing the block with her discipline on footwork. And then what do you do if you're Mac Pedraza? Looks on uh, the Purdue basketball side, excited about her younger brother, Miles. Top 100 recruit. Hudson sent it over. Pedraza set up. Soft touch for Merzik. Dug up Skimmerhorn. And the quick punch for Anderson. Back the other way. One of the first times all day. A little quieter here at Rec Hall. Holland with the serve. Chicoin and Merzik. Chloe Chicoin saying that she's 5'10. She's probably more a little bit more 5'9", and she's getting up. She's got a heavy arm. It's kind of like you traveling to LAX last night oh trying to make your flight. <laughs> Don't even, guys. I've had a venti Americano and a Celsius today. Chicoin with the kill. Yeah. Meanwhile, Raven Colvin trying to get Purdue through this second set. And there's Markley. It's about the smart tooling off of the hands, hitting where the tips, rolls, kind of the, the off-speed stuff that wins. Hudson dug out by Grimes. There's Hannah. From our perspective, covering the sport, it is a little exhausting. I'm going to admit, it's hard to keep track. Hudson, that almost hits the ceiling for Pedraza. Tapped over from Markley. And another tap, this time Chicoin. Hannah blocked back, Myers. And Merzik finally sends it over. Myers again, and Merzik can't get there. That was a little tough now. And set somebody in front of the 10 foot line, in front of the three meter line. It's pink in this case today. Now she can if the players stays down, but the player can't do an attack to. Really impressed by Shacoin's decision making. First time that we're seeing it live. Here's another chance, but blocked back. Punch in towards the court and then we read out. Alexa Markley stays disciplined. Ball setter, ball hitter watches the hitter. Sets up a great block. And there's that decision making again, Shacoin. One more time. This time, a slightly bigger swing. Merzik and point Penn State. Adjust, quick tempo, pull off the hands. Punch, counter punch here. Nittany Lions and Boilers, there's Hudson. Katie Schumacher calling, carrying the torch passed by Russ Rose. Chicoin, one of the best in the nation. Merzik also. She's got a smile on her face after every dig, and that's what you want as a libero. You're the, you're the heart and hustle of the team. Chicoin ends up dug out. Merzik. Good job that time, Skimmer Horn. Hudson. And set point. I got to give love to liberos. That all started with Maddie Skimmerhorn. Some fantastic digging. Again, she made it look easy, but if you pay attention to where she is before the ball is being hit, she's able to read and react very well. It's her serve. Pedraza, Merzik, and there's that dig. That's what Skimmerhorn does. Number two with the Big Ten coming in. And Hudson, way too much.
this team with that energy, that heart, that hustle, that command behind the 10-foot line. Hudson. And finishes it out. Service errors are the one thing that Purdue's leading in. Negatively, six service errors to Penn State's two. It's the defensive specialist Brown with this serve. Trammell takes care of the kill. And right off the bat, incorporate the middles, Taylor Trammell. How do you incorporate the middles in this game? Well, it starts with your passing game and Penn State on Final guard defense on serve receive, starting off. Pass that hit, get out of it, regain that control. Shakoin hit dug up by Pedraza. Merzik trying to rescue. Would be a force and potentially be one for a long time for this program. The one to serve. Blocked by the Boilers, kept in by Brown, but running out of real estate. Hustling for balls, it's a big thing and it's a testament to both of these coaches. Culture in this game. Hershey this time, the one serving Myers over the top, big swing. It's gonna be hard to lose a game if you're doing that. Her turn to serve. Hudson tapped it over. Markley with the swing. Because again, the libero is not hitting. You can't hit, that's not their specialty, so they're supposed to take that second ball when the setter takes the first ball. Scale three being you have three hitting options, two being you have two hitting options, and one being you have one hitting option. These are perfect threes coming from Purdue and Penn State. But likewise, Jess Merzik missed a little bit there, hit the DS, because that's a weird angle for the setter to take Matt Pedraza in this case. Amy Anderson and then Skimmerhorn and point to the Boilers. Penn State record crew try to get loud again. Merzik rolled it. Hudson kept alive, Kirshen. And again, this time Pedraza, Markley. Colvin. He's passing extremely well, incorporating middles, able to get that first ball and side out. Markley blocked back. Heaney and Colvin, Merzik. Reigning Big Ten Center of the Year, Pedraza. The one to serve it. Another point to the Nittany Lions. Again, mentally, challenges are tough because you got to come back, and this Penn State just gave the momentum again. So, Purdue, you got to stick back. We were in a nice little rhythm throughout the first couple of points here. There's a lot of first ball getting side out on your first serve receive play. And we got to get back into that rhythm if you're Purdue. And that goes to Pitt State again. See that? So remember, number Violation five, Purdue's, the Purdue setter, freshman Taylor Anderson, number five. She is back row right now. Again, volleyball, we have rotations. So it looks like she's front row if you're new to this game, but she's actually back row. So she cannot jump and, and touch the ball over the net at all. Uh, Colvin can certainly jump in, can't touch it. And of course, Raven Colvin selling that set, staying with Taylor Anderson, saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, is set me back. Service error that time on Colvin. It's funny, you, you talked about momentum. I was about to ask you before, Anna, if the timeout, the end of the second set for Dave Shondell was going to be indicative, you know, of the rest of this match. Was that going to kind of light a fire under his kids? Well, see, that's just it. You know, challenges early on, what I've found is challenges early on in a set can kind of change that momentum. It can be a momentum shifter. And that's why, as a coach, if you're sure, or even just if there's a 50-50 chance, might as well take that risk early on because it can set the tone. Now, Penn State has just within reach of that three to four point lead we're talking about. Purdue still in there. It's time the defensive specialist Brown, the one to serve. And a big swing. 
Out. This is what you want, Emily Brown, a DS coming in and serving specialists. We see this a lot, so she's able to essentially one of the better servers on the team and just hit her areas. It looks like it's a dainty little serve, but she's specific with where it's exactly going. Again, if you put a dime on the court, she'll be able to hit it. And there's Shakoin again. Corner of her eye to see what's open on the other side of the court. So as a, as a libero, you also kind of help out your hitter, hitters. So you can see Maddie Skimmerhorn go up behind her, say, hey, you got line open, hey, you got a hole. You need to get a little bit more creative. That time, the Purdue transfer, Trammell, who goes out, the one that got the point. Oh, in the block for Penn State. And that's how she's able to tool. It's all about timing, timing it out perfectly. Already five ties here at this third set after a second set that had 11. Chicoin gets it knocked back by Merzik and Holland. Hudson had it sent back. Myers, Holland. And the point to the Nittany Lions. Gets into Purdue's head. They got a first ball side out right here. Regain momentum. Chicoin. But Kirsch at the service error. The grad student, Maddie Skimmerhorn. It's time to serve. Pedraza, Merzik, blocked back. Colvin. And, and you can't tell this from sitting, you know, at home, but they're communicating. Taylor Anderson's yelling at Raven Colvin. And only had two service errors. So far in this set, they've had two. Total of four. But again, you send it to your outside industry. Alexa Markley, she is smart, dynamic, knows when to hit hard. You have all options, so then the opposite side in this case, Penn State's blockers are confused. They don't they can't tell where the ball is going. But Penn State coming back from the timeout, missing their serve. Purdue can capitalize neck and neck. Regain momentum back at the service line. Put over good serve so then their block knows where to set up and can set a nice block for their defense to surround around. Great dig there for Grimes. Had to go way down to get it. Colvin Long. They like it. Taylor Anderson heads up set distribution, directly correlated to volleyball IQ, knowing who to set, when to set, and of course incorporating the middles as much as you can, but at the right time. So I kind of like the mess up. I know it's coming off of a missed serve and you want to capitalize, but it's aggressive. Here she is setting it up. And Heaney, too much on it. A place where the Nittany Lions have won 90% of their conference games. 326 and 35 all time here at Rec Hall. Chicoin. Just not enough real estate there to run down after it's off of Pedraza. A bomb down the line, and Ch Chloe Chicoin, that's just it. When you scout and you're watching film and you're writing notes on Chloe Chicoin, two in black, you're going, oh, okay, her favorite hit is across the court. That, that's her heaviest hit. And then she rips one down the line like that. She's able to just be smart, creative, and crafty, hit anywhere on the court efficiently. Speaking of efficiency, Cameron Hanna from Pedraza. I like it, it's like Hannah said, oh, I can hear you talk, so I'm just gonna prove to you that <laughs> There's I also no chance. can do that. Yeah, watch her hang time here. Nice high ball, but the tiniest hole, again, from that Purdue block. These Penn State attackers are gonna take advantage of it, no matter what. Over 1,000 career kills for Cameron Hannah. Heaney painting that back line. You can see it, Grace Heaney getting things going. The three blocks on the day, dynamic on that right side, pinned defensively and offensively, she's a lefty. So Penn State knows that coming in. The scouting report says, all right, we got a lefty on that right side pin. They've done a nice job of blocking her so far today, but I'd love to see her just fire up here. That was rescued by Skimmerhorn. Myers 
Dug up Merzik. And Hanna, still alive. Shacoin and Merzik can't get it. Tied again here in the third set. Emily Brown, the DS. What a dig. This is a hard ball to dig. Great, great hit from Penn State and Emily Brown with the dip. I mean, that's a great day. That's a hard, can we kind of call it this, cut angle, and you really have to be disciplined to read. And Bursick says, hey, I can play two. 18th dig of the match. Just this match is going exactly, I think, how everybody anticipated it going. It's really back and forth going tit for tat. Brown, and then Anderson, one more over, Hudson. Rescued by Holland, there's nobody there. <laughs> 10 ties here at this third set. Chicoy dug out by Stark. Merzik. And that hit off the Purdue coaching staff. And the Boilers have the lead. First lead change of this set. See if that proves pivotal. Merzik drops it over the top. Dug out Skimmerhorn. Merzik. Tied again. Point to the Nittany Lions. Just Merzik comes out. This is an undefendable ball where she hits in the court. Remember we talked about corners. Reaches up over that block. That's not on Maddie Skimmerhorn. That's not her ball. That's nobody's ball. Now again, Purdue says, okay, we dare you to hit there again, but Jess Merzik can hit there again if she really wants. Punch, counter punch here at Historic Rec Hall. Hudson, and off of Kirshen. Loving this neck, the neck. It's just one player smart, the next player on the other side comes out and is even smarter. I love this kind of volleyball. It's service error for Skimmerhorn. Game high, 12th tie of a set. Merzik the serve. Colvin got that blocked. Markley tried to rescue it and couldn't. Great serve from Jess Merzik targeting Eva Hudson. Again, we talked about this outsides when they pull back, the left side pin hitter pulls back. You want to target them serving because the whole concept is tiring them out. But then Taylor Anderson heads up set distribution play, making sure that Raven Colvin in the middle gets incorporated. Anderson serve. Pedraza and Markley, there's Anderson again. Tough dig. Anderson, Skimmerhorn, Hudson, and the Penn State block tops in the Big Ten. Holland and Pedraza. Mac Pedraza on that right side pin sets just such a nice block. Watch her eyes. Look at her head is faced down. And look at, she's angled into the court. Anybody who wants to ever be a fantastic blocker, look at that exactly right there and just try to mimic that. Every single time that you're blocking, that is Discipline, footwork, discipline, and eyes. We talk a lot about eyes, Her eyes are discipline. Quinn Manger, the one who was in to serve for Penn State. Purdue puts this away. It's Heaney with the kill. Grace Heaney adjusting. We saw her struggling a little bit with the Penn State block big on that right side for, Penn Duke, or for Purdue, left side for Penn State. But Grace Heaney getting things going, finding those high hands and capitalizing. After the Hudson serve, 
Markley, Hudson with the dig. Set up Anderson, Chicoin. Colvin. And we're at set point for the Boilers. Huge play from Raven Colvin. Honestly, great day from Jess Merzik just over. And Raven Colvin again, that's a really hard ball. She makes it look easy. A lot of these players great at those jousts. Trying to rattle Hudson, service error. Some of those, Eva Hudson is gonna, she's gonna kick herself later on for that. Cause you get, growing up, you always get reamed out for missing a, a game point serve. But you're only human, how could you not, right? Cameron Hanna back in for Pitt State. For the Pedraza serve, big swing, Chicoin. Grimes setting it up, Markley black back, Colvin and Purdue takes back-to-back -back sets. Now, Purdue not having a match. Their last match was Wednesday. It gave them Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to scout Penn State. And Dave Shondell. Uh, it's an event getting ready for Penn State. Chicoin with a bullet on the serve. Hannah, big swing. Barrow, Jillian Grimes. Chicoin with the soft touch. The ball on the floor, it's usually that off-speed stuff that wins games. Hudson softly over. Merzik got it blocked. Myers. Pedraza setting up Hannah. You think that she can set Jess Merzik. She switches it up. Great volleyball IQ from the setter. Who to set, knowing the situations, using that peripheral vision to see what's going on on the other side of the net. Hannah. Her hitting percentage shoots up to 250. Is under two coming into this set. That's it dug out by Grimes. Pedraza set it up. Merzik. He pace at conference. Just fantastic. Eyes again by Jess Merzik, sees the court, sees the hands extremely well. Stark rescued it, Merzik, one more time. It's six years since they've hung a Big Ten banner, a little longer than that, since there was a national title. But here, trying to stay alive at the fourth set. Exactly what we talk about when we talk about being a smart hitter. For as young as they are, they have plenty of them. But more times than not, it's it's really on that setter to make that decision to set up her setter or to set up her hitters. Uh, we could shout her out today. 32 assists on the afternoon. Attempted another one, Stark. Another chance. Dug out, Shakoy. Hudson rolls it over. Pedraza and Stark. And Holland. It's, it's a lot. She makes it look easy. It's a lot harder than she makes it look. Chicoy, too much for Holland, and Merza can't rescue it. That's why we love volleyball. It's a little subjective. Trammel. Fire sets it up. Chicoy dug up Merza, Pedraza, Stark. Dark. Out of system, so the block would have been closed. Again, heads up setting from Mac Pedraza. Pedraza to set here. Chicoin, Pedraza, and Stark runs out of room. Chicoin, Jess Merzik gets a little, or Mac Pedraza gets a little piece of it. And that's what it is in five. It doesn't have to be a perfect dig. All you gotta do is just get it up in some way. Second chance, Grimes, Hannah, cross court. Grimes again, Pedraza, and this time. Hannah with the punch. Kamen, remember we said that second step approach, she was already in the air as that, or about to be in the air. As Matt Pedraza sets the ball and ball. Lourdes Myers 
just that connection with Taylor Anderson and Taylor Anderson really just buckling down and mentally getting through this as far as volleyball IQ incorporating those middles. Mortis Myers, one of a handful of upperclassmen that see time along with Colvin and Horning. Of course, the defensive specialist, Emily Brown. Pedraza, Merzik, cross swing. And tied up again. two sets that combined 24 times. See what this one brings. Even up for just the second time. Merzik. Point Purdue. And we've seen a lot of unforced errors off of this specific. Maybe back when Emily Brown was serving and then now when Chloe Shaquan is back there. It's a little bit, they're trying to be crafty, they're trying to be smart. And I don't, I don't mind it. I don't think Katie minds it either, but the name of the game is to get the ball in the court, force Purdue to create some of those unforced errors. That time it's Hannah. And that's how you do it. Mac Pajaza just kind of slows down the game, sets a little bit of a higher, slower tempo ball to that right side pin. Cameron Hanna and Cameron Hanna again just able to just hit around the block nice and easy. Force the other team to make the mistake. Hudson running out of room. Second lead change of this fourth set. Drives on the serve. Merzik off the set for Pedraza. Myers. Purdue, give the kill to Myers. Taylor Anderson, though, it doesn't matter, it, even if it's close. So, so this is what I love from Taylor Anderson, the setter for Purdue. Remember I said we grade balls on a three-point scale? Even if it's a two ball, whoever the middle is, whether it's Raven Colvin or Lourdes Myers, they're running to Taylor Anderson and they're selling that hit and they're available, making themselves available. Is it breaking the tie here? <laughs> it's just a ridiculous set from Matt Pedraza. Stays on her feet, takes it with her platform, a bump set. And Jess Merzik comes in aggressive, that's heads up. And, and somebody told me this, right? You kill the tough sets and then you do off speed with the best sets. And there's another kill. And there it is. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be this hard kill, but that's what Jess Merzik is so good at. She's smart. She knows when to kill the ball. She knows where to put the ball. That's why she's one of the most dynamic attackers in the country. Merzik, big swing again. First in NCAA Division I history, as far as coaching records go. And then, of course, seven NCAA titles, four consecutive titles, 2007 to 2010, and 17 Big Ten titles. So let's see what happened. It could just be she either didn't blow the whistle or something, and she just replayed. But I think there's confusion on both sides. Yeah, so the call, the call on the court, inadvertent whistle. So again, see, referees are human too, guys. You can't, can't be so hard on them. And I love a volleyball because there's that replayability where refs can say, nope, it's my call, I got it, my bad, let's replay the point. Petraza got the block on Colvin. And Mersic with another one. Jess Merzik, 
We talk about how dynamic she is offensively, but again, blocking at the net. Holy cow, eyes, eyes, eyes. Look at her eyes, they're down. She's just staring at that ball. She goes, ball, looks at the setter, and is able to tell where the setter is going to set the ball, and then immediately looks at her hitter and squares up off of the hitter's shoulder. And likewise, Raven Colvin able to come back and get a side out on that first ball. His players trust him, and he trusts his players. It's such a huge thing. He's an 18 to 22 year old human, right? You just want people to trust you, yep. believe in you. That's right. Heavy ball for Holland. And we're tied again. That's another thing Dave Hundell talks about is confidence. He wants to instill confidence. We kind of got into a conversation where you know coming out of high school, it's so hard to have confidence. And he just really believes in building up his players, building up, giving them that confidence. Music rolled it over, Shakoin. And drives as good as she is. Couldn't dig that one out. You give Chloe Shakoin an inch in that hole, she's gonna capitalize. Again, intelligent, you talk about it, we talk about it earlier, and Dave Shondell, you can see, so he's giving that thing, the one finger, he's holding up one that's gonna go area one, perfect serve by Purdue, trying to serve Jess Merzik in area one, that right back. Merzik finds the seam. I mean, that is an undefendable ball. Coming out of the back row, you're aiming for corners. Middles are aiming for corners. Back row attacks are hitting, are aiming for corners. And it wasn't a super hard hit ball. It was just to where other, other people aren't. Holly Holland serving for Penn State. And there's the decision making of Shakoin again. So we see her wind up, go hard cross. Everyone's expecting her to go hard cross again. You want it. If you're playing left back, you're playing right middle back, you want that ball. You want that big kill, or you want that big dig. And Chloe Chicoin knows that. She goes, mm, I'm going to catch you on your heels, make force you to go on your toes. Maybe some extra motivation for her today. She was recruited by Russ Rose before he retired here at Penn State. Come hand. back with a point of their own. I mean, what hands from Mac Pajaza and Angelina Stark still? That's a hard out of system ball to hit, and she times it out perfectly. It goes up aggressive. That was a hard hit ball by Angelina Stark. Pajaza serve. Chicoin delivering again. Mixes it up. Cross, hard, heavy hit, then tips right over the block, then hard line hit. Which one is it? Which one's her favorite hit? If you're scouting Purdue right now and you're trying to figure out where Shakoi wants to hit it, you're confused. So she's hitting everywhere on the court. Hannah, haven't said her name for a little bit. Tied again. I think Mac Pedraza knew that you didn't say her name. She goes, she goes, you know what, we need to hear that name a little bit. A little bit of a higher, slower tempo, but Cameron Hanna comes in, sells it for hang time. It's crazy, and that Purdue block just missed time, block just a little bit, it's just enough. Her 13th kill of the afternoon. Grimes went for that ball and didn't quite dive to get it. This is truly back and forth, back and forth. What have we seen in the past couple of plays? Middles incorporating, setters really distributing that ball evenly across hitters, and of course, Jess Merzik coming out of the back row, and likewise, Eva Hudson just coming out of the back row. The D Grimes, Merzik. Four points away from a win. If you'd have asked me before this, I mean, I would have said, I would have put money on it. I don't think I'm supposed to say that, but I would have put money on it that this was going to go five. And Purdue has just come out and played lights out. Really disciplined volleyball. Cameron Hanna dropped it over. Hudson, Pedraza rescue, Grimes, and then Merzik. 
Timeout for Katie Schumacher Cohen. Oh, and I love this crowd too. Great timeout from Katie Schumacher Cohen. And this crowd understands what is at stake right now. They understand that Penn State is within one. They understand Purdue is four points away from winning the match, and they are getting loud. Hudson snuck it through. Give her the kill. So right now, what you have to do on both sides of the net is play extremely disciplined volleyball. Then you stick to the fundamentals. You stay mentally focused. You turn on that mental focus in a way that you've never had before. Anna, dug up by Brown, Merzik. Rescued Hudson. And another point for the Boilers. It doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to get you the point. Skipper Hort serve, Pedraza sets up Hannah. Back they come. So that was pretty. That was pretty pretty right there. Cameron Hannah just finds the tiniest hole. Her hang time is crazy. Mac Pedraza kind of sets her a little bit higher, slower tempo, but then mixes it up. I love their connection. It's like they just are reading each other's mind. They know when to go to quick tempo. They know when to go a little bit slow tempo. And Cameron Hanna is just able to really take advantage of Purdue's block in just the tiniest of lack of discipline. Version on to serve. Good dig, Grimes, Pedraza, and Bursic. Big Shakoy. And one away. It will be the freshman Taylor Anderson. Purdue trying to finish this. And service error. Now that happens when you're a freshman. And we'll give Taylor Anderson that because she's been so disciplined and she's been playing beyond her years tonight. She's allowed to miss that game point if she comes back and she makes a great decision setting that ball. Hudson, Merzik with a good day. Hudson got it blocked. Heaney. The dig for Grimes. Mercik! Pedraza! Hudson! And Purdue has won at Rec Hall for just the fifth time in this series history. 